It's a toss-up between vivacious vermilion and uh, captivating. Uh, excuse me. What did we decide about the sensuous sapphire? Sorry, could I have a cup of coffee, please? It's too obvious. <laughs> it was a coffee, wasn't it? Ignore them. They've got a big competition coming up. Beauty competition? Nah, Crofts. <laughs> <laughs> can, can, can I sit down? I'll, I'll, I'll bring it over. Thanks. Leo, you're a bloke. <laughs> the nearest way you've got to one. <laughs> <laughs> so what's it to be? Snuggable sin or tonsil tickling turquoise? She smiled at me. I think I'm in love. I can already feel a warm tingle starting to spread from the tips of my toes. I think you'll find that's the jug of hot coffee you've just poured all over your trainers. <laughs> <laughs> Daddy. I'm Anita. Leo. Leo. And are you anything like a lion? Yes. <laughs> Except for the urge every few days to drag home a half-dead gazelle. I've just started as manager in that new bookshop in town. Manager? Wow. So how long have you been working here, Leo? Me? Um... How long have you been wiping tables, serving customers and pouring hot coffee over your feet? Oh, I see what's <laughs> happening. You think I work here? Excuse me? It's an easy mistake to make. I don't understand. It's very simple, really. When I say I don't work here, I mean I don't just work here. I'm not one of the regular wage slaves. <laughs> Actually, I'm the manager. Oh, I see you're the manager. Anyways, uh, more coffee? You run the place. Donut, Danish. You're in charge here. Yes, yes, yes. Oi, lover boy. Over here. Hear that? You just can't get the staff. I'll be right back. So, what's going on between you and Grinderella? <laughs> Look, Loretta, I really like her. I think she likes me too. What? Listen up, elephant boy. The only way any woman's <laughs> gonna fancy you is if you slipped half a dozen extra strength love capsules in her cappuccino. No, she said I'd make good coffee. She smiled at me joke. And she's not only beautiful, she has a mind. Oh, one between the two of you. There's another two. I told her I was the manager here. I impressed her. I'll push off and let you get on with your managerial duties. But, Anita... Maybe we can meet up later. See a movie or something. Bye, Leo. Bye, Anita. She is beautiful, though. Her hair. Her eyes. <laughs> and we've yet to see in a regular day where shaved head and straight jacket. <laughs> People, can I have your attention for a few seconds? Loretta, Leo, exciting news. The Porcellino Corporation are pleased to announce their Employee of the Month competition. A top representative from head office will be secretly visiting every shop in the mall on the lookout for the friendliest, most courteous and helpful member of staff. Oh, yeah. A typical devious ploy by the lard-bellied bosses to squeeze an extra droplet of sweat from the brows of us downtrodden drudges. The first prize is an all-expenses-paid luxury holiday in New York. <laughs> good afternoon, sir. I hope you won't be embarrassed when I tell you that your hunky good looks and animal magnetism have quite turned me pins to porridge. <laughs> Get out the way. <laughs> Allow me to escort you to our most comfortable nook, where I shall be at your personal convenience to cater for your every whim. So, Leo, a trip to the Big Apple. Exciting, huh? Who needs the Big Apple when the apple of my eye just walked out that door? <laughs> This contest is a golden opportunity to show that my staff are the elite, the Alpha Plus, the creme de la creme. Out! And stay out, you bozo! <laughs> I wasn't the secret inspector, just some nerd wanting directions to the bus station. If I'm going to win this prize, I've got to get myself organised. Uh, what's up with Leo? He has this weird, goofy look on his face. Shock horror. Hold the front page. No, not his usual weird, goofy look. More dreamy and starry-eyed. Oh, uh, yeah. The king of cheesy chat-ups has only gone and got himself a date. Oh, that's wonderful. By lying through his teeth and telling the girl he's manager here. Oh, that's terrible. She loves me. 
She loves me not. She loves me. She loves me not. Leo? She loves me. She loves me not. That. <laughs> we need to talk. Leo, you cannot lie and tell your new girlfriend that you are the manager of Cone Zone. I just got carried away, that's all. When Anita told me she was the manager of a bookshop, I panicked. I wanted her to respect me. You're a good person, Leo, a kind person. Anita will appreciate you for what you really are. Not because you're sitting in the boss's chair. Now, tell her. I can't. Tell her. She'll dump me like an old chip wrapper. <laughs> Remember that line of Browning's? So absolutely good is truth. Truth never hurts the teller. Yeah. Well, old Bran Nance told his bird a stonking great whopper when he came up with that one, hadn't <laughs> Leo, hear what I'm saying. You know it makes sense. Yeah, but... <sighs> OK. Excellent. You're doing the right thing. <sighs> Dear Mummy and Daddy, <laughs> hope you're both well. Just a quick note to say all is well and I can't wait to see you when term finishes. When term finishes. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. Leo in the back row of the circle with a girl. It's about as likely as winning the lottery, spotting the Loch Ness Monster <laughs> and enjoying a Phil Collins single all on the same day. Nah. I guess that's why he's so late in this morning. Oh, I'd love you from the top of my quiff <laughs> Soles of my blue suede shoes Morning, Romeo! Uh, Morning, girls! Uh, what a wonderful, uh, wonderful day. The birds are singing, the sun's shining. Ah, don't it make you feel grand to be alive? I take it your date last night was a big success? Oh, Corrie, it was bliss on a stick. A romantic candlelit supper for two at Pile of Pasta. Then I saw the multiplex for the late showing of Reservoir Chainsaw Zombies from the Planet. Well, at least telling Anita you weren't the manager here didn't put her off you. Ah. You did tell her, didn't you? Well, I, um... Leo? I couldn't, I'm sorry. The minute I spill the beans, I'm for the chop. We need to talk. Sit. You really have let yourself down, Leo. Well, now, we are going to get this thing sorted out once and for all. When are you seeing her again? She said she'd pop in here before work. Excellent. The minute she walks in that door, you are going to tell her the truth. Because if you don't, then I will. Oh, all right. That's the spirit. <laughs> Hiya. OK. Deep breath, calm thoughts, g stop. <laughs> all right for some, eh? The manager sitting back while the staff do all the hard work. I need a... I still have to tell you. Leo, I had such a fantastic evening last night. I've never met anyone quite like you before. <laughs> what is it? You look troubled. There's something I have to get off my chest. I've been untruthful and I've told a lie. It's about my job. What is it? I'm not... <clears throat> <laughs> I'm not really the manager here. Huh? I'm actually... <laughs> I'm actually... What? What? An airline pilot. <laughs> <laughs> ah! Gorry, what's up with that brother of yours? He's living in a dream world. The boy's a pathological liar. Oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> then he must be catching. Excuse me? A deadly dose of fat feebles. <laughs> Lying, cheating. Deceiving. You know what I'm talking about. Coriander. <laughs> How did you know that that was my name? Oh, a little bird told me. A little dipper, head chopping hippie, who left a little letter to Mumsy and Dadsy on the day. Oh, no! <laughs> Safe and sound. You had no right to read my private correspondence. That's despicable. You have read it all, have you? Sorry, Corey. I mean, 
coriander. You don't understand. And why is that? Because I'm not educated like you. I didn't mean... Th Dear oh. Mummy and Daddy, bloody bloody bla blah, blah. Can't wait to see you when term finishes. Oh, I remember it all. The next bit went. University is everything I thought it would be. Plenty of hard work, but lots of fun. That's enough. All right. So now you know. Satisfied? Not quite. You've been swanning around here, ramming it down our throats about your la -di da professors, your eyebrow lectures, your crummy campus camaraderie, and it's all been a complete sham. It hasn't. Well, did you, or didn't you, go to university? Of course I went to university. Exactly how long did you stay at university? Four days. <laughs> you did a three-year degree course in four days. <laughs> Nobody ever asked me what I wanted. They had my name down for university when I was still in the womb. But? It's not the work. Believe me, I can write essays standing on my head. It's just... You don't want to hear this. Oh, no, go on. It's better than neighbours. I just didn't want to be there. I realised that I didn't want to be a student. So you decided to devote your life to dishing out Raspberry Ripple in little pointy girls? No. I knew you wouldn't understand. I never had time to think about what was best for me. And that's all I need right now. Time and space to think. But meanwhile, you're still writing to your old folks, conning them that you're still a student. Greta, they must never find out. I'm putting myself in your hands. My future happiness depends on you. Oh, it does, does it? I promise you won't tell a soul, please. That money that you were going to advance me for the dress. <laughs> How much did you say you wanted? <laughs> I'm still not sure I understand, Leo. I thought if I told you I was a pilot, you might worry about me. You know, hijackings, emergency landings, reversing into mountains, that sort of stuff. <laughs> So I lied and told you I was the manager here to protect you from that worry. You really are the kindest, most considerate guy. Better get to work. You working today? Me? Um, yeah, yeah, I'm flying down to Rio. <laughs> Brazil? Is it? <laughs> Maybe we can see each other later. You'll be back by then? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm driving Concord. Rum, rum. Yeah. Well, bring me back a coconut. You got it. <laughs> Don't forget your parachute. Flying down to Rio, you wasn't. <laughs> right, I'm off to eat those shops. I need a sexy little number that's going to knock the socks off that inspector bloke. How did you get Corrie to cough up the dodge for a new outfit? Sorry, but my lips are sealed. <laughs> Lying that you're an airline pilot is even worse than claiming to be the manager of Cone Zone. How can you live with yourself? No prob, I've got it all sorted, don't worry. I give up. You're a hopeless case, Leo. <laughs> Young man? <laughs> Young man! Sorry, how may I help you? Your strawberry yummy bunny. Any good? Any good. The ice cream scoop of the century. All right, all right, <laughs> I'll have one. I can't stand marshmallows. I don't want wafers. And nuts get stuck in my teeth. All right, see you. Miss it on the marshmallows. Waver the wafers. Give nuts the chop. That's it, is it? That's it, madam. One scrummy, yummy bunny. <laughs> Looks more like a kangaroo. Well, if it hops off the plate and stuffs your handbag in its pouch, we'll give you a refund. <laughs> I suppose you want peeing now. It's 120, please, madam. That's all I've got, so don't start complaining. No, 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 that's fine. You go and sit down, I'll sort this lot out. And no overcharging me. <laughs> I know what two people are like. Relax. I'll bring you a change and a nice cup of tea on the house. What do you mean you're a double glazing salesman? No, I don't want any of your picking double glazing. <laughs> Young lady. Young lady, do you work here? Well, you don't think I'll come in to insult the customers for free, do you? <laughs> the spoon. It's extremely grubby. Get me another one. What? You can't seriously expect me to eat with this mucky item. 
It's probably caked with contagious bacteria. Oh, give it here, Grandma. <laughs> <laughs> Now you can see your face in it, if you're brave enough to want to do such a thing. Here you go, madam. Your change, your tea, and a nice clean spoon. So sorry about that, madam. Thank you. <laughs> Excuse me, is Captain Summers back yet? Captain Summers? From South America? Brazil? Oh, Brazil. Where the nuts come from. They must have welcomed him as one of their own. He said he'd meet me here. Take a seat. As soon as Biggles makes a landing, we'll send him over. <laughs> you trod on me hand. As long as it's not the one you use to waggle your joystick. <laughs> oh, Leo, what are you playing at? Oh, Anita, she's out front. No time to explain. Gotta fly. Chocks away. Pip, pip. <laughs> this is getting ridiculous. Oh. Everybody's searching for this mystery guy from head office, and so far, not a sausage. I could grovel for my country the practice I'm getting here, Marlon. A weekend in New York. Can you imagine it? Statue of Liberty. The Empire State Building. The, the blokes. <laughs> Oh, we've got to find this fella, and quick! <laughs> oh, man. Oh, Anita. Sorry I'm late. Turbulence like you've never seen. <laughs> oh, what a journey. First the plane was rocking this way, then the plane was rocking that way. This way, that way. It's all I could do to avoid spilling me pineapple slammer. Oh, that sounds so exciting. Exciting? Ha! A thousand miles out over the Atlantic, and I find myself with three engines down, a fire in the hold, and even worse, I'd run out of them little packets of peanuts you get on the drinks trolley. Oh, Leo. I don't believe this. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, hang on a moment, I'm busy. Here is nothing. Just an ordinary day in the life of... Ace Summers, professional pilot. Oh, and I didn't forget your coconuts. <laughs> Young lady. Just a sec. I wish to speak to the manager. Are you the manager? <laughs> yes, yes, I'm the manager. Whatever it is, I'll deal with it in a minute. Well, really? <laughs> What on earth are you doing? Bridget Twig from Head Office. I'm here to announce the winner of the Employee of the Month competition. Ah, Miss Twig. Welcome to Cone Zone. But you're a woman. How very observant. <sighs> That's my freebie weekend to New York down the lavvy. What's going on over there? Nothing. Just some competition for the staff who work here. Oh, Leo. Oh, Anita. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the Porcelino Corporation, I have spent the day visiting our various establishments in the mall, the shops, the salons, the cinema, the fast food outlets, looking for the employee who best embodies the fine qualities that are byword for our company. Now, in this very emporium, Cone Zone, I have encountered some of the rudest staff and the sloppiest service it has ever been my misfortune to encounter. But, ironically, amidst these shambolic shenanigans, I have also discovered our winner. I, a diamond, sparkling in a sea of sludge. A member of staff who, under the most provoking circumstances, still manages to be friendly, courteous, and helpful. And the name of this beacon of good behavior and saintly service is <laughs> Mr. Leo Summers. <laughs> what? 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 Did you hear that? I've won. I've won. 
Oh, I've won. There must be some mistake. You don't work here. You're an airline pilot. <laughs> <laughs> but all your stories, the uniform, the coconuts. Excuse me, I've got to get my prize. <laughs> well done, young man. A credit to the corporation. Have a wonderful weekend. It's all very much. <laughs> and it's a way. I've won. I'm going to New York. Oh, and will you be flying the plane there yourself? <laughs> no, look, listen. Goodbye, Leo. You're going? Excuse me. Anita, I only pretended to be a pilot because I didn't want to tell you I wasn't really the manager here, and I only told you I was the manager here because... Well, because I didn't want you to think I was some hopeless nobody. Are you finished? Yeah. Well, so are we. See? I knew this would happen. The minute you find out I don't have an exciting job, you dump me. Listen, I don't care what job you have. You can be a road sweeper or a rocket scientist. It's not important. Oh, great. No. Not great. But I like you for what you are, Leo. Funny, kind and caring. I'm not dumping you because of your job. I'm dumping you because you lied to me. You lied, Leo, and I'm really sorry, but I can't forgive you for that. You're a lovely guy. Just be yourself and you won't go wrong. Look at this. A pile of rotten coconuts. I'll have to remember her by. Well... I don't wish to say I told you so, but I told you so. <laughs> Sir Walter Scott put it rather neatly when he said, Oh, what a tangled web we weave when first we practice to deceive. Oh, shut your face. <laughs> Excuse me? Shut up yakking on about lying when you've been lying through your teeth ever since you got in. Leo? Letting your poor parents think you were still at university. What's Sir Walter Scott have to say about that, eh? <laughs> Was Loretta right? She told you, didn't she? That twisted, two-faced little toad. I actually heard it from old Kazi, the caretaker. What? Mm. He heard it from Jim on security. He heard it from Sally at the health club. He heard it from Dan. He heard it from Greg. He heard it from Mr. Spiller. And he was obviously told it by Mrs. Spiller. He heard it from Eve. He heard it from Robbie. He heard it from Marnie. And she heard it from Loretta. Everybody knows. Ah, cheer up. I'll send you a postcard from New York. <laughs> Coriander. <laughs> OK, go on. Out with it. You've started. You might as well finish. You do go out on a lot of dates with an awful lot of different guys. Let's face it, Loretta, you've dropped more men than an RAF parachute division. All right, Vanilla, I'm your mate. We don't want anyone to hear you, do we? Just call me Cupid. I can speak into Ben. Oh, party animal, motorbike, gorgeous blue eyes. He's popping in here tomorrow at 10. Loretta, he's here. And I know what you mean about those eyes. Oh, let's have a peek. 